welcome to the fascinating world of aluminum production. In this video, we'll take you on a journey through the process of turning bauxite into the versatile metal we all know as aluminum. Once the bauxite is mined, it's transported to a processing plant for refining. Here, it undergoes the Bayer process, a chemical transformation that turns bauxite into alumina, or aluminum oxide. next step is calcination, where alumina is heated to remove the water content, leaving behind pure aluminum oxide. Now, we come to the heart of the aluminum production process, the Hall-Herold process. In this step, alumina is dissolved in molten cryolite and subjected to an electric current. This process extracts aluminum metal from alumina while oxygen ions react at the anode, the resulting aluminum metal sinks to the bottom of the cell and is periodically removed. It's then cast into various shapes and cooled to solidify. Have you ever thought about how these tools we use every day are made? Our journey begins with the selection of high-quality raw materials, typically stainless steel or sometimes even silver for more premium cutlery. Once we have our raw materials, they are cut into the appropriate lengths and shapes. Depending on the design and style of the fork and spoon, the cut pieces are heated and pressed to give them the desired shape and thickness. Heat treatment is crucial for enhancing the strength and durability of the cutlery. The pieces are heated to specific temperatures and then rapidly cooled. Once the cutlery passes the quality control checks, it's packaged for distribution. Careful packaging ensures that the utensils reach your kitchen in perfect condition. There are many precious metals today. But gold mining has been of great importance since ancient times. Gold is often found in quartz veins or alluvial deposits. The mined ore is then transported to a processing plant, where it undergoes crushing and grinding to reduce the ore to a fine powder. Next, the powdered ore is mixed with a weak cyanide solution in a process called cyanide leaching. This helps dissolve the gold from the ore in some cases. Gold is further refined through smelting, where impurities are separated from the gold using high temperatures and fluxes. The refined gold is cast into various forms, such as bars or coins, depending on its intended use. Our journey begins with the selection of high-quality gold. Jewelers typically use 18-karat or 14-karat gold, known for its durability and brilliance. 
The first step is to create a design for the necklace. This design is often transformed into a wax model, giving the jewelry artisans a tangible template to work with. The wax model is used in a process called lost wax casting. It involves creating a mold from the wax model, then melting the wax away, leaving a cavity for the molten gold. Next, the gold is melted to its liquid state and poured into the mold. This step requires precision to ensure the design is faithfully reproduced in gold. Once the necklace is cast, it undergoes extensive cleaning and polishing to remove any imperfections and to enhance its luster. The extracted copper ore embarks on a journey to a processing plant, where it undergoes crushing and grinding, breaking it down into smaller, manageable particles. Following that, the crushed ore mingles with water and specialized chemicals in a flotation process. This separation technique isolates valuable copper minerals from unwanted elements in the ORE.TO elevate its purity. The concentrated copper ore, now known as copper concentrate, undergoes smelting at high temperatures. This process transforms copper minerals into copper mat, a partially refined copper form. Copper production upholds rigorous quality control standards. Every copper cathode undergoes thorough inspection to ensure it meets the exacting demands of the industry. Copper is renowned for its recyclability. A significant portion of copper products is recycled, reducing the need for new mining and minimizing environmental impact.